week, our focus reports are on the wonderful city we broadcast from, Paris. Don't expect any famous landmarks, cheese, wine or berets, though. We want to show you the French capital's cultural diversity. Today, we're heading to districts where Asian immigrants have made a mark. Welcome to Chinatown in Paris's 13th arrondissement. It's the largest so-called Chinese neighborhood in continental Europe, but we can also find elements of Vietnamese, Laotian and Cambodian culture here as well. Hidden in the small street inside a parking garage is a Buddhist temple, a single room with several altars honoring Guan Yin, the goddess of mercy, and Buddha himself. The temple belongs to an association of French residents of Indo-Chinese origin. People say these temples are hidden, but I wouldn't say they're hidden. I'd say they're not visible, which is not the same thing. Hidden suggests that it's on purpose, but if the temples aren't along the pavements, it's because of financial reasons. Thuy is originally from Vietnam. She gives guided tours of the neighborhood. She arrived in France when she was five. In the 1970s and 80s, tens of thousands of Southeast Asians boarded fishing boats hoping to flee the conflict and ethnic violence. Many boat people ended up living in this area of Paris that was freshly built and caught in the crossroads of the economic crisis of 1973. This was all almost empty. On the other hand, a lot of refugees needed housing, so it was a good opportunity for both the city and the refugees. But since rents were high, often several families would share the same apartment to save money. Today, the Chinese neighborhood in the 13th arrondissement remains the historical center of Paris's Asian community. But since then, other groups have arrived in France. In Belleville, in the northeastern part of the capital, there's a growing Chinese community. Here, the neighborhood straddles four arrondissements, making it a prime area for pickpocketers and petty thieves. The thief would cross the street over into the 19th or 20th arrondissement, so that the police would have to spend a lot more time and energy filling out complaints. From an administrative point of view, there was three times more paperwork if the complaint was filed in a different arrondissement from where the theft actually took place. Three years ago, a special police brigade started patrolling the area, encouraging residents to file complaints using simplified procedures. Residents and shop owners in the neighborhood are often migrants from Wenzhou, a poor province in eastern China. People come from all over the Paris region to buy specialty goods in these Chinese grocery stores and supermarkets. Then there are the numerous restaurants, like this one. The customers aren't always Asian. It's very diverse. There are all kinds of people, Chinese, Vietnamese. There are tourists as well, French people. There are a lot of offices around here, Africans too. Everyone likes Chinese food. Further in the neighborhood, an association bridges the gap between Chinese and French culture. Here, around 30 volunteers give French classes to migrants who sometimes have been in France for several years. Some come because their children are growing up and they need to be able to follow their schoolwork and be more involved. The children speak French, but at home everyone speaks Chinese. Others come because they need to find work and they want to leave the cocoon of their community to find their next job. Grammar, pronunciation, discovery of French culture, these students are learning necessary keys to ease their transition into French society. Now, preparations are underway for this year's pilgrimage to Mecca, which starts in October. Millions of Muslims will meet on the Hajj in traditional attire. Among the producers of this outfit, especially for West African customers, is Weber, a Czech textiles company. Around a decade ago, its managers decided to focus on the African market. A risky bet at the time, but now that move is paying off. Alexis Rosenzweig reports. Bromov, a small Czech town that's home to the firm Weber. Not exactly where you'd expect to find African-type mannequins. 
But Weber produces high-quality brocade in demand from Mauritania to Cameroon through Mali and Senegal. Markets where Weber has gradually gained share. 90% of our output is exported and is related to the Muslim calendar. Our products are worn by pilgrims from Africa and we hope to also get into Arabic countries. At first, Weber's bankers, insurers and suppliers shook their heads in disbelief. Even though there is huge poverty in Africa, there is also growth and more and more rich consumers who like our products. But like everywhere, there are risks. For example, we've so far been unable to get credit insurance on contracts with African partners. Millions of meters of brocade are produced here every year using cotton from Egypt and India and machines from Germany and France. The unlikely global business has enabled Weber to save jobs in a region where the textile industry has suffered from Asian competition since borders opened. Under communism, we were essentially producing domestic textiles that were exported to the USSR. We had to modernize all our machines and also to learn how to do business with African people, to learn their cultural and religious traditions. Weber's main competitors are from Germany and Austria, but the Czech companies are already a major player, providing Mecca-bound pilgrims with white cotton and brocade that will be dyed and sewn to make boo-boo worn in Bamako or Dakar. That's it for our two-hour live show. I'll be back, though, in a full minute with a few full news roundup for you. Do stay tuned to Pulse Venkat.